Okay, folks, we on our last geometry question, which was a little bit of a challenging one, I would say. Um, it dealt it with, it dealt, sorry, I'm on the wrong geometry question there. Let me go back one. There we go. There is our question. It was a little bit tricky. It's question 10. So let's see the reasoning that they give us and how do we fill that into the diagram before we even start to consider what to do. So I'm going to use a nice bright color this time. In the diagram, the circle passes through three points, DBE. Okay? There. So it means that those points lie on the circumference of a circle. So if we need it for some reason, folks, then we have it. We've got this as a chord because it runs from there to there. And we somehow need to read that something was produced before we can believe that this is a, a line is straight or that that will be, we need to read that as a chord. Okay, let's see. The diameter ED, oh, here they surprise us. The diameter is given, the moment the diameter is given, remember what comes to your mind? If there's a tangent, those two things are perpendicular. Does the diameter support, uh, 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 subtend rather an angle on the circumference? And yes, it does. So what we get, the takeaway from that one, is that here yeah, at B2, we indeed have a right angle. Now, I hope your eye caught it. My eye immediately caught the right angle that they gave us there. So if this here is going to be a produced line, then immediately, folks, we have a cyclic quad over here because the, in, or the opposite angles are 180 together, or you can then argue the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite over here. Okay, so let's read on. With this as a diameter, it is produced to C. Look at that. The diameter is produced, so this is straight. Okay? AC is a tangent to the circle, so yeah, that's as much as we can say there. So, but we can now immediately claim this as a cyclic quad, which will then make this angle here at F1. Folks, the angle at F1 equal to the angle here at D2, because this is also an exterior angle to that cyclic quad over here. Okay. I haven't read that this is, this is a chord so far, which means that it's straight, but I'm going to show you where they give us that information. They give us this as a chord BE. So immediately I could say that as well. Okay, and then obviously there's a little bit more. There's this angle that's external here, an interior opposite related to F2. So all of that comes from the fact that they gave us that that line is indeed produced. Okay, so, so far that's what we've got. We said we've read that this is a line or a chord over there, so we'll come back to that. Okay, and AC is a tangent to the circle at B. So AC, I'm looking for the point A, it's hidden down here. AC is a tangent to the circle at point B. So the angle between, let's collect the yellow, the angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So this is a yellow one-liner. But also over here, we have a chord DB. Here we have the tangent, so that the angle between the tangent and the chord at B1 is therefore then equal to the angle at E. Look carefully, follow my fingers. There's the chord. Okay, the angle in the alternate segment is the one that lies on the circumference on the opposite side. So follow again. There's the chord. Okay, the angle that lies between the tangent and the chord is the two-liner. 
and then we follow until we meet on the circle and that will be a two-liner as well. Okay, so that is, I think, so far everything we can take from the tangent, yes. Yes, it looks like that is it. Let's read on. M is a point on DE such that AM is perpendicular to DE. Ha, there they confirm that we didn't see this incorrectly, that this is definitely a right angle. Okay, AM, now AM is this line. Now the moment they name something like they did over here, folks, then you can immediately accept it as straight, AM, because they didn't say curve or whatever there. It's a line segment, AM, and called BE intersect at F. Now at this point, I had the fullest right to start making angles equal, once I've read this and that. Okay, so I can say immediately that this is vertically opposite equal to that, and if we grab the blue, then these two over here are also vertically opposite, equal to one another. Okay, now let's see, are there any hidden information that they were supposed to, or didn't tell us that we're supposed to get from this diagram? I don't think so. If I look at, we had tan cord, we had that, we had this. Yes, no, we're ready to go to our first question. Now our first question says the following. F, D, oh look at this. This happened right in the beginning. They're asking us to prove the cyclic quad that we found literally after having put into place in this diagram the first three or four angles that are equal to each other. We've got it. The answer is in the diagram. Now, folks, that's a key thing I just said. I said the answer is in the diagram. If you did a good enough job of analyzing that paragraph, the answer will be in the picture. Okay, the answer will be there, and you'll have to do the mental gymnastics to try and remember how it happened. So let's go back. FDM, the cyclic quad. It happened almost immediately after. In fact, it happened after because that was there right in the beginning. So it happened when we read that this here is a diameter. This became a right angle, therefore exterior angle equals interior opposite, and it is a cyclic quadrilateral. So let's write that down as an argument for three marks. We'll start off and we'll say that M2, angle M2, is a right angle, and that was the angle that they gave us right in the beginning, okay? And then, that is now for our cyclic quad. M2, let's remind you, M2 is that angle over there. B2 became a right angle when we read about the diameter. So B2, also, you can use the word also, angle B2 is equal to 90. And the reason is it's an angle in a semi-circle. And that's enough for us. Therefore, M2 is equal to angle B. Why? Because they both equal 90 degrees, just to remind you. And what can we say? Therefore, the exterior, or let's go F, B, D, M, is a cyclic quad. And the reason is the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle of the quadrilateral. That's how it became a cyclic quad. And remember, after that, there was a lot of things that became equal to one another, or there were two or three more things that happened um, after that thing became a cyclic quad. Let's read on. Prove that by giving reasons that B3 is equal to F1. And please note that this is for four marks. 
Now B3 is here, is equal to F1 that lies over there. Now folks, we have to absolutely think how that happened. Well, this became a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so this angle became equal to D2, okay, because of exterior angle of a cyclic quad. And B3 became equal to D2 because of the tan chord theorem. Okay, so it's asking us to argue the case that B3 is thus equal to F1. So let's write it out. B3 is the angle between the tangent and the chord. Let's start with that. B3 is equal to, what was it, D2. And that was the tan chord theorem. Okay, that was the first thing. But then also we had F1, which was equal to D2. And that was because of the exterior angle of the cyclic quad, CQ, stands for that cyclic quad. Now remember it's for four marks. Okay, we almost have deserved all our marks. We just need to conclude here, therefore, that B3 is therefore indeed equal to F1. And that's what they wanted us to prove. So we used the tan chord theorem to get there, and we used the fact that there was an exterior angle to the cyclic quad. We did well so far, I think, for four marks. Okay, let's see what is next on the menu in terms of questions. Oopsie, for three marks. Three marks, they're going to ask us to prove that the triangle, now let's go back to the diagram. We're looking at triangle CBE over here being similar to triangle CDB. So C, let me label it so that we can see that it's different. Let's go orange. C, B, C, D, rather, B, that one here, the small one, okay, we want similar to C, B, E, the big one. So I'm just going to put a circle around this so that you can see where we're looking at. And we're looking at that big triangle. So well, the first thing that your eye should tell you here is that you have two angles that are equal. B1 was tan chord equal to E in the other triangle. So we've got that angle. And C is a shared angle. How easy was that? Okay, let's have a look. Let's write this out. This is in the small triangle. B1 is equal to E in the bigger triangle. Okay, because of tan chord. And then because the angle C belongs to both those triangles, that's our job done. So for three marks, let's write out our proof of that this is definitely the case over there. Okay, so we started off and we're going to say that B1 is equal to E. That's where it started. Angle B1 equals angle E, and that was the tan chord theorem, right in the beginning. Tan chord theorem. Angle C is a shared angle, okay, in the triangles. So we can immediately say, therefore, the remaining angle has to be equal over here. Okay, so in here, it's over here, it's this angle D there, which is equal to angle, we've used C and E in the big one, which will be equal to the angle B there. But we can immediately say that triangle... Um, CDB, the full triangle, is indeed similar. Now remember, similarity is with four ver three vertical bars, is equal to the triangle CBE. And the reason they are equiangular. 
you don't have to state the third angle because you know that the sum of the angles in these two triangles is 180. So nothing is going to change. Okay, let's see what the next section says, the next 10.2. If it is further given that CD is 2 units, DE is 6 units, um, calculate the length of BC. So let's go back to our diagram. CD is 2, DE is 6. DE is 6 here. From there to there is 6. And they told us that CD, which is this part here, is 2. Now you can see that these things lie across triangles. So CD only belongs here. Um, and CE belongs to the whole big triangle. So the CE component um, is...